Dimensional analysis is just another name for finding the relationship between values measured in different types of units. Any unit can be converted to another unit by creating a ratio between the two units. If you've ever converted a measurement taken in one unit to another, you've done dimensional analysis. These are all examples of simple conversions that a person may run into in a regular day. You just have to know what the relationship between the two units is. Each of these relationships can be written in a variety of ways and with different numbers. As long as the ratio between the values is the same, they can be used interchangeably. Let's consider a simple problem of converting distance units from the English system to the metric system. To do any of these kinds of problems, first you have to find a starting point. The starting point will nearly always be the unit of the value you have been given. In this case, it is miles. Next you have to find an endpoint. This will usually be given in the problem as the unit you are looking for. In this case, it is kilometers. The last part of the problem is what goes in between them. We may not know what goes there yet, but we can insert the framework now. The next thing we need to do for this problem is figure out how to relate miles to kilometers. This relationship may be written as an equality, or it may be written as a ratio. But the most common way to represent it for our purposes will be as a fraction. I will refer to this fraction format as the conversion factor from now on. We also need to recognize that the relationship can be expressed with any of a variety of values. These two things are equivalent and can be used interchangeably in the equation. The first step, which you should do without even thinking about, is to take the unit of the original item, in this case, miles, and place it on the bottom of the next conversion factor. The next question you should ask yourself is whether it is possible to directly relate the desired end unit to the unit on the bottom of your current conversion factor. Because we already know that we can relate miles to kilometers, the desired end unit can be placed on the top of the conversion factor. An important thing to note here is that even though we represented the conversion factor before with miles on top and kilometers on the bottom, the placement of the units is completely dictated by the problem itself. For our problem, miles needed to be on the bottom, which meant that kilometers would move to the top. This is how our conversion factor will look for this problem. We can go back to our starting and ending units, plug in our beginning value, and add our conversion factor. Then we can solve for our end value. Something else to recognize is that we could have used different numbers in our conversion factor, and as long as the ratio between them is still the same, the end value will also be the same. So now let's look at a more complicated problem. Let's say you actually want to drive from New York City to San Francisco, but you want to know how much it would actually cost you in gas money. We already know the distance between the two cities. You'd also need to know what the average cost of a gallon of gas is going to be for your trip. But you just bought a European import and it only measures fuel efficiency in kilometers per liter. If you want to know how much the trip will cost, we have to take that into account as well. Here we have the problem written as you might see it in a homework assignment. How much would it cost to drive from New York City to San Francisco, 2,906 miles, in a car that gets 18 kilometers per liter of gas? Assume average gas price of $2.87 per gallon for the trip. A good thing to do next is lay out everything we know about the problem including any relationships that may be helpful. We are told the average gas price is $2.87 per gallon. We know that the fuel efficiency for our car is 18 kilometers per liter. We know the distance between the two cities is 2,906 miles. We also know the conversion for miles to kilometers and can list it in either of two ways. And since we have two different units of measure for volume, gallons, and liters, we will probably need to find out how to relate those two things. We can use the same strategy on this problem that we did for the first problem. First, we have to know where we are starting, what is the value we are given, and what its unit is. The starting point given is the distance between New York City and San Francisco. Therefore, our starting unit is miles. The goal of the problem is to determine the cost, so our end unit is dollars. In this case, I don't know how to relate miles directly to dollars, so we know there will be more than one conversion factor needed. All we have to do now is figure out what conversion factors go in the middle. 
Here is where we take all those knowns and figure out how to use them. We can start on the problem from any direction, but the first thing we should do is automatically move the starting unit to the bottom of the first factor. If we go back to our list of knowns, the only one with miles in the relationship is this one. So this would be what to use for the first conversion factor. Again, automatically move the last unit on top to the bottom of the next conversion factor. At each new conversion factor, try and determine whether or not there is a way to relate the current unit to the end unit. Since we still can't, we keep going. Let's say from here you don't know what to relate kilometers to. Like I said earlier, it is possible to work the problem from either direction, so let's go to the end and work backwards. From here we know that the unit on top of the last conversion factor has to be dollars, so we can put that there now. If we go back to our list of knowns, we see that the only factor that has dollars in it is the average gas price. We can insert these values in as our last factor. And since we are working backward, we can move the unit on the bottom of the last factor to the top of the one before it. So let's see what this all looks like together right now. The problem is really almost done. We just have to figure out how to relate kilometers to gallons. Since we don't know how to relate them directly, we know that we still have to fill in more than one conversion factor. Again, we return to our knowns and see if there is anything that hasn't been used. We haven't taken into consideration the fuel economy of our European import, and that gives a relationship between distance and volume of gasoline, even though it's not the volume unit we want. But since it is the only other thing that involves kilometers, and since it does move us in the right direction, we can put that in as our conversion factor here. Again, move the unit on the top of our last conversion factor to the bottom of the next. We can again ask ourselves if it is possible to relate the unit on the bottom of the last factor to the unit on the top of the next one. In this case, we can because we have a relationship between our two units of volume. Since that is the case, we can combine these two factors into one and add the values from our known relationship. Here we see we have all of the conversion factors we need. All the units cancel correctly and we are left with the unit we want. All that is left is to add back in our starting value, remove the units, do the math, and solve our problem. It will cost $198.05 to drive from New York City to San Francisco. We can summarize the process as follows. Determine what the starting value in unit is. Determine what end unit the problem is asking for. Put the unit of your starting value on the bottom of the first conversion factor. Put the desired end unit on the top of the last conversion factor. Fill in the factors in the middle based on the known relationships, either those given in the problem or those that are commonly used. At each conversion factor, ask yourself if you can relate the last uncancelled value to the desired end value. Double check that all the units cancel and that all the relationships have the correct values. Remove all of the cancelled units and solve for your end value. As long as you know where to start and where to end, if you follow the units, you can't go wrong.